I'm going to make the little mini album that goes inside of the locomotive out of black cardstock. But it can be difficult to see that, um, to see how that goes together. So I'm just going to make a couple of sample things out of white cardstock just to show you how I put it together. There are four pocket pages in the mini, and I've started out by card cutting the cardstock to six and one half by seven and a quarter, so we have four at that size. And then also out of black cardstock, we have two at one and five eighths by three and three eighths, and three at one and one quarter by three and three eighths. Now we want to do some scoring, and on the pages, with the seven and one quarter side at the top, we'll score at three and three eighths, and then six and three quarters. And then for the two that are one and five eighths by three and three eighths, we'll score at one. and then one and one eighth. So that was one and one and one eighth. And then for the three that are one and one quarter by three and three eighths, we'll score at one half and three quarters. One half and three quarters. Now on the, these are the hinges that put the pages together, and so we'll crease on the scores, and then add score tape on either side. The same thing on the two that are larger with a narrower channel, we'll again crease on those scores, and put score tape on either side of that 1 8 inch channel. And then on the pocket pages, you can see I've added a strip of score tape on this one side. We're going to turn this into a, a pocket like this. And before I fasten the score tape down, or else you can do this after you know you've got it closed, I'm just going to put a bead of glue right along that inside edge um, to make the pocket. And then go ahead and close this up. And then if you want to have uh, circles to open your, to get at the tags more easily, you can center a circle punch on either side of the open end of the page. So we'll have four pages like this, and then to join the pages one to each other, use the, the smaller of the uh, hinges here, so all three pages would get joined like this. And then on the ends, join a smaller tab so that we would have uh, a larger tab hanging off. So this is what it looks like in black cardstock. Hopefully you can see that this is the one inch with the little one eighth inch channel sitting right there. Then I have my four pocket pages and then on the back the other longer tab with the one eighth inch channel. To make the covers I've cut out a medium weight chipboard two at three and one half by six and three quarters and then for the spine I have a piece that is one and one eighth by three and one half. And then to join them I've cut a piece of black cardstock. This measures two and five eighths by four and five eighths, two and five eighths by four and five eighths. And I've prepped it with some score tape on the back by putting a half an inch score tape on either end, then leaving a quarter inch space, and then an inch and an eighth in the middle, which is the width of our spine here that goes here in the middle. So to put these together, I'm going to remove the backing from one side. 
Now I can use that shine of the score tape and the grid lines on my mat. I'm just going to center or roughly center vertically so that I have the same distance top and bottom here. And keeping this straight on my mat, I've evened that with the edge of my score tape here. Then I'll remove the other backing from this side. And following the same line on my mat and the shine of that score tape, I'll put the other side on. And then I can remove this tape from the center. I'm sorry, the backing from the center. Actually, I'll use this piece of backing to put right on top of the stickiness down there. And then I can take my ruler and put it here. And with my ruler, it gives me a nice edge to butt the chipboard up against so I get it even on the bottom. And then I can also use that for the quarter inch spacing between the, the back and the front there. So then I'm just going to wrap this. And then give it a good burnish and burnish in between these creases as well. Then I'm going to take uh, strips of black cardstock that are cut an inch wide and just wrap all of my edges so I'll have a nice finished edge. So I'll do that and then I'll be back. And then after I have wrapped all of my edges here, I like to fill in in between this with some um, scrap pieces of cardstock just so I have a nice flat area. So here I've got a piece cut to the right side and I'm just using some ATG adhesive on this. And I'll burnish that in place. And I'll add another piece here to the spine as well. And I've already done it on this side as you can see. So that is the cover prepped. For each of my pocket pages, I've cut a piece of decorative paper that is 3 and 1 8 by 6 and 1 quarter. And then I just used an inch and one quarter punch to cut this uh, part of a circle here because the original circles were one inch and that gives me a, a little bit of a real veal there. And the size of that paper allows for about an eighth of an inch reveal around the edges of each page. Now I'm going to have um, some quotes uh, on, to go on each of my pages and I've cut these, I've printed them out on my computer and then they measure two and one quarter by four and one quarter. And so that uh, when I'm putting the pages together and using glue I don't mess up my nice quotes, I've just made myself a little spacer here. It has, uh, it's kind of the opposite of this, it has black cardstock on top of white so it's two pieces of cardstock thick just like the quotes are because I printed, <clears throat> excuse me, I printed these on uh, kind of a cream colored cardstock and then I backed them with black cardstock. So for each one of these I'm going to make kind of a little, little pocket and I'll just figure out where I want the quote to go. And on this first page I'm actually using two of these little elements to help make a pocket. Now I'm using the original release of the uh, steampunk debutante paper so I have some of these just cardstock weight pieces that I can use. Um, if you're using the collector's edition you won't have these pieces but just you could use uh, you could potentially use chipboard but you'll have to watch the thickness of it as it comes or just cut out individual elements from the paper here and there. 
So I know I can make kind of like L shapes or backward L shapes on my elements here with glue to hold my, um, to make the pocket. And I'm going to start with this one over here and I'll just make an L shape like that. Make sure I'm holding it the way I wanted to hold it. Putting that down and my card can come out very nicely. And then over on this side I'm going to keep this edge about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a little bit more, and I'll just put some glue along this line and down here on the bottom so I know it's over on this side and then down here on the bottom. Give that some pressure. And now I've created a nice little pocket that my quote can fit into. And then I'll probably just use um, ATG to attach this to the page. So for a lot of the pages I only have one element to create the pocket and I don't think that's sufficient because the tag could start to fall out this way. So what I've done is made a little kind of stopper thing out of black cardstock. It's a die, it's, I think it's a Spellbinders die, just a little gear here. See how big it is. Oh, it's about maybe three quarters of an inch. And I just put a tiny little piece of um, lightweight chipboard behind it to kind of raise it up a little bit from the surface. And then I cut a hole through the cardstock, I mean the decorative paper here, I've determined where I want it to go. I'll just put a little dab of glue there. And then I can have a nice little stopper so that the card can't fall out here. And what I'll do is kind of, um, they're not too thick, but just in, in case I, I want to avoid bulk, so I'll kind of alternate where those are so they don't match up exactly uh, on pages and maybe if these two are on the inside when I flip to the next page the next ones will be on the outside and the pockets will be towards the inside. So I'll finish decor decorating all of my pages and then I'll be back. So now I've finished decorating all my pages and I'm ready to put this assembly into the cover. So here's my cover and I have score tape on these two flaps but I also want to put a piece here on the center. So I'll just cut a piece and this will be a little, the center is a little bit bigger than uh, it's about an inch and an eighth wide so just center a piece of score tape or use a couple pieces if you don't have inch wide. So now I have my piece all prepped. I have the additional score tape on the spine. And what we're going to do is center this on the spine. It's a little bit shorter up and down than the height of the book. So you'll want to pay attention to that. And just, you can see the edges of the um, spine, the chipboard for the spine. I know it's hard to see on this black, but you'll want to get that um, centered as well. So once you see where that centered place is, just kind of make a tick mark over here where the end of the tab is coming. Now, Here's my little tick mark and I'm just going to use my ruler and transfer a line. And now I know that that's where I want to start this tab is right on that line. So we're going to do this in three stages. 
We'll first put down this front tab and burnish that. Then we'll put down the spine and then finally we'll put down the back tab. So I'll remove my score tape backing from that first tab. And there's about a, I would say, a, a total of an eighth of an inch difference between the pages and the covers. So I'm just keep holding this back about a sixteenth of an inch from this edge down, down here. Looking at this line I drew and going ahead and sticking that down. And then I'll give that a burnish. Then I'll reach in here and remove this backing. I'm going to turn it this way so I make sure I'm staying straight. And go ahead and get that center part down. And then once I have that center part down, I'll remove this final piece of score tape backing. And put that down as well. Then I'll burnish inside of the creases here. And then of course inside of each one of these pages. And finally, once again, here on the front and in that crease. And then gently put that together, fold these two outside ones. So there's our page assembly inside the book. You can kind of give it some encouragement to want to lay flat. And then to uh, decorate the inside front and back cover. I've cut two pieces that are three and one quarter by six and one half, three and one quarter by six and one half, and I'll just leave a little eighth inch reveal around these three sides, which really is about that same reveal there, and put down my front and back inside covers. Now I'm using score tape around the edges and then I'll just use ATG in the center. I'm going to have a ribbon closure that attaches to the front with a magnet. So before we put the covers on, I want to install that magnet and the ribbon. So here on the front, I've used my ruler and measured in three quarters of an inch from the edge and centered it from top to bottom and that's where I'm going to place a magnet. And then on the back side, my ribbon is three eighths of an inch wide so I've just centered a little uh, three-eighths of an inch channel here so I'll know where to glue my ribbon down and I'll probably just cut a piece about six inches to start. We can uh, see how long it needs to be at the end. So I'll get those two pieces attached. So I've installed my magnet on the front and glued this piece of six inch ribbon to the back. We'll just leave that for now because we can't determine how long to make this until we get the book completely finished. So now I'm ready to uh, put my outside covers on and for the front I've cut this piece from the paper. I did do a little fussy cutting and add some borders on here. You can see it's a little ugly right there, but that's not going to show because I've also cut this piece. It's uh, I used Tim Holtz Steampunk um, on the edge die to create this and then I just backed it with some of the paper that kind of matched this element in the front. And you can see I've left a tab here 
and I have a tab over on this side there about a half an inch long and this part here is about a quarter of an inch and so I can and I've prepped those edges with score tape so that I can use that tape I'll have to remove some of this in the back here obviously um, and make a little pocket here for the front so then that will be my front and I just have a plain piece of gold for the back and once I put those on I'm going to determine what I want to use for the spine and before I attach this down I will put a thin uh, ring of glue around the magnet. No glue on top of the magnet though. So here are my covers on and I decided to put a couple of these stamps here on the spine and then I want to dangle a couple of um, charm kinds of things from the top of the spine uh, just to decorate it and also to give a way to pull it out of the uh, box so I'm just going to take my crop a dial and come down oh I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch or so and punch a hole centered on the top of that spine there and then I've just taken a, a length of eighth inch ribbon I think this is about Oh, 10 inches long and I doubled it over stuck the loop towards the inside and then I can put the tails through there and make a little hanger to attach some charms now I'm just using some cardstock charms if you use chipboard charms make sure you check to see that there's enough uh, depth left in the um, opening uh, there's about a quarter of an inch uh, extra space so I think you should be able to use some chipboard um, charms if you want to so I'm just going to decide where on these ribbons I want to attach the charms and have them dangling down so here are my little charms attached. I just tucked the ribbons underneath in the back and glued them down. And now let's work on the tacks. So for the tags I've cut four pieces of decorative paper three by six and I rounded the corners and I picked paper that I liked on both sides and then from the paper line I've just cut out eight different elements and I backed them with some black cardstock just to give a nice uh, little edge to them so that they would stand out from the paper because some of it's a little bit busy and now I'm just going to uh, put one on each side of my um, 3 by 6 papers and that will be the tags. So now that we have all the tags made and installed we know how thick our book is going to be so we can go ahead and size our ribbon. I've got a one inch gear here you could use anything for your closure but I'm going to use this gear and I've got two black card stock circles that are also one inch so here's my little um, magnet that matches and I'm just going to put that in the center of one of these black cardstock circles and then I'll let that find its place up here and then I can see how long I need to cut that ribbon so I'll go ahead and cut that I think I'll just use a little piece of score tape. I think that'll hold it on this side. And I'll bring that ribbon back in.
and then I'm going to back the gear with this circle of cardstock. I think I'll use some glossy accents to attach that on there. And then once that uh, cardstock has set up on that gear, I'll go ahead and let me flip this around so you can see. I'm going to put these two together. So I ended up using some score tape to put the two layers of black cardstock together for the closure. That worked a lot better. And now I have just a few little tags that I cut out from the cut aparts in the paper. I backed them with some black uh, cardstock and they can just sit in here. I used some of the little pearls that I had used on the locomotive um, in uh, these little openings. So that's the completed mini album to go inside of the steampunk locomotive.